Welcome on God's Peace to you. I'm Pastor Zachariah Shippen. And I'm Pastor Emily Shipman. We serve the Northwest United Lutheran Parish in the towns of Crosby, Ambrose, Alamo, and Wild Rose, North Dakota. It is our prayer as you watch this video that you would hear God's word for your life today and that your faith in God will grow. May you come to know God's love for you more and more each day. Our gospel this day comes from Luke, the 23rd chapter. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God. His chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, but we're getting what, our, what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated at this time. Today is Christ the King Sunday. Uh, many of you may not know that, uh, but this is the last Sunday in the church year. So there is a church calendar. It doesn't coincide with the calendar we use. So next Sunday is the first Sunday of the church year. So Saturday is the new year of the church year. If you want to celebrate, great, but make sure you come to church, okay? Don't get too rowdy. Um, but today is Christ the King Sunday. Uh, it's the final Sunday before the church calendar comes to a close. And this is the last word we hear before we move into a new year. And the word today is that Jesus is our king. But to us, the concept of king is one we don't live with here in North Dakota. We don't have a king in our state or in our country. And God willing, we probably never will. So this concept of king is something that is foreign to us. It's not a term that we can relate to on a personal level. So we need to explore this concept before we continue looking into our text. So we know what a king is, right? Right? Ha! Ah, good. Phew. Good. So, kings are usually born into their power. They're raised as princes designed to inherit the power of their father. They're raised in palaces. They're taught how to rule. Their needs are provided for above and beyond what is normal for regular people. A king has power, wealth, property, control, sometimes respect, sometimes they are feared. They expect people living in their kingdom to pay taxes. They go to war when they demand, so kings expect those that they rule to go to war. And they expect them to obey any other commands that are given. They're at the top of the food chain. They have all the power and authority. Whereas all others living in their kingdom live under their rule. So this is kind of what we know and understand as a king, right? Okay. This is not what we hear about Jesus. So if you remember with me, Jesus was born in a stable. 
to young parents who were not rich because there wasn't anywhere else for them. Jesus did not grow up in a palace or in a castle. Rather, he spent his time preaching in the wilderness. Jesus was not waited on by servants, but instead chose to serve other people. Jesus did not have great wealth or property. He did not collect taxes or call up armies for war. And Jesus was not at the top of the food chain. Rather, he spent his time at the bottom, loving and caring for prostitutes and tax collectors, the lepers, the beggars, the poor. Jesus didn't sit on a throne pronouncing judgment on the world. Jesus, rather, is in the place where humanity has done its worst, where humanity has accused him, beaten him, ridiculed him, bad on him, mocked him, and nailed him on a cross. The cross, a place reserved for criminals, a symbol of pain and suffering and shame. Jesus is in this place where humanity cannot do anything else to destroy, dismiss, or humiliate Jesus. And it is from this place that Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Brothers and sisters, this is the central aspect of the gospel. This is the heart of the gospel. That Jesus, the Son of God, the one through whom all things were made, this one, loves you. Jesus, the one, even when we try to destroy, dismiss, or humiliate Him and His mission in our lives, still cries out, Father, forgive them. This, brothers and sisters, is the King that we follow. The one who hangs on a cross. The place for criminals and those hated by society. And from that place declares forgiveness to you and to the entire world. This is our king. One who doesn't wear a crown of gold or silver, but rather one of thorns. Willingly suffering so that God's love will be known to you and to everyone. Our king, who would rather die than allow the world continue to continue living without knowing and understanding the height and depth of God's love. Our King, who chose to love you rather than seeking after wealth or fame or power or property or even retribution for our sinful action. This is the good news, brothers and sisters, that the worst has already been done to Jesus that you cannot destroy, dismiss, or humiliate Jesus any more than, is already, than He has already born on the cross. You cannot out-sin Jesus' forgiveness. This is the King that we follow. One that pronounces mercy and forgiveness from the cross, rather than one who sits on a throne pronouncing judgment. It is on the cross that our King is revealed. It is on the cross that God's love can be clearly seen. That Jesus, bearing all the shame and humiliation the world could heap on Him, still in that place demands, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Brothers and sisters, this word of forgiveness is for you. You cannot be separated from God's love by your action. God's love is still for you and always will be for you. And the Apostle Paul makes this abundantly clear in his letter to the Romans. He writes, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God calls to each and every one of you, saying, I love you. Come and follow me. So we have to ask the question, what does it look like to follow this king? What does it mean that our king is one who spent the majority of his time with prostitutes and tax collectors, lepers and beggars and sinners? What does it mean that our king was poor, spent most of his time in the wilderness teaching, and didn't have a palace or a throne from which he ruled? What does it mean that our king chose suffering rather than pleasure? What does it mean that our king chose to die for love rather than live without love? With Jesus as our king, and with Jesus as our ruler and leader, who does this call us to be? In these questions, brothers and sisters, lie the transformational power of the gospel. Our king was one who loved all people, taught about this love, and lived this love through his actions. And Jesus, our king, calls us to live under His rule, following His commands, this is who we are called to be as Christians. Our King demands that we love one another as He has loved us, accepting pain and humiliation and suffering and pain. Hear that again. Accepting pain, humiliation, and suffering so that those around us would know God's love for them. This, brothers and sisters, is what it means to live in the kingdom of God. Now, remember, living in a kingdom means living under a king's rule. Right? Right, folks? Kingdom. Gotta have a king. You live under that king. Right? Okay. So we have been welcomed into God's kingdom to live and move and find our purpose as people living under God's rule. And believe it or not, we pray this all the time. You know that prayer called the Lord's Prayer? Yeah, we pray about this. But remember with me, we say, Thy kingdom come, kingdom, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. So, your rule, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We remember these words, right? Have we thought about them before? Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> good. We pray this prayer every Sunday and hopefully times throughout the week that we would live in God's kingdom, that we would live under God's rule, obeying God's commands as we live on earth, to obey God's will as those in heaven obey. This is our call. To recognize that we are not the kings and queens, brothers and sisters. But rather, we are living in God's kingdom, under God's rule. So, how does this take shape in our lives? What does it mean in our everyday lives that Jesus is our king? Well, it begins with questions like this. Who am I serving here? God or myself? Or questions of, who is this benefiting? God? Or maybe my neighbor? Or is it me? Or whose commands am I following? Are these God's commands, or is this what the world commands? Our relationship with God is deepened and enriched when we allow ourselves to ask these difficult questions, when we allow ourselves to question who it is that we truly see as king, whether it's who we see in the mirror or whether it's actually God. 
As you journey this week, I ask that you keep these questions in mind. Who am I serving? That you consider how your actions reflect who it is that you serve. Whether you're serving God as your king, the world as your king, or if it is yourself. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is indeed a king like no other. One who, when confronted with wealth and power and fame, instead goes to love and teach any who would listen. Jesus is a king who willingly chose to bear the sin of the world to demonstrate to you the love that God has for you in the world. Jesus is our king, brothers and sisters. Will you let him rule in your life? We would love to have you join us sometime for worship. Here is our parish worship schedule and our contact information. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.